sip wine, wine, wine. Kick my feet up when I get tired. What is poppin', everyone? What's poppin'? How you niggas doing? Niggas is doing. We are doing the best we can. And, you know, I'm just feeling great, trying to make sure the vibrations are still going, okay. still moving, still vibrating, I guess. So, um, how are you doing? I am doing good, actually. I'm in the middle of moving next month. I'm getting all my affairs in order. So, I feel like I'm in a good place. So I'm dying. happy. I'm excited for what's next what's coming up so yeah it's only looking up from here i love that i love that so we're gonna get to a little fake story time that happened to me um last week actually i don't remember what got, i think what prompted us is what we were talking about um certain places having a dress code because i was talking about how every time i go to seaside they don't allow me in when i have my crocs on and y'all know i wear my crocs all the time and so I'm like, how fucking dare them? And then um, one of my coworkers, he was just like, you don't wear heels. You don't ever like, you know, try to dress it up. And I'm like, no. And he literally said, be a fucking lady. Those were his exact words to me. I said, Whoa. I said, because I said, because I choose to wear flats and sneakers because I'm flat footed. I'm not a fucking lady. I'm like, because I like to wear sweatshirts. That's not ladylike. So I feel like it pertained excellently to this episode because I'm like, why is wearing heels associated with being feminine? That's very weird for him to say, be a fucking lady. Be That's a fucking rude. lady. I mean, and then I followed it up with suck my fucking dick. So I guess it didn't help that I said that. <laughs> yeah. But um, I just don't, I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like heels. Anyone that knows me knows I don't like heels anyways. And everyone is like, why don't you wear heels? You're the shortest one out of everyone. That doesn't mean I want to be higher to the sky, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, that's probably my story time. And I just felt some type of way. And I felt like... Shafiq need to know I'm on that ass. All right. Well, if you haven't already, check out our YouTube. Yep. Check out our Patreon. Check out our Instagram. Check out our Twitter. Check out our TikTok. Check out our sip and review. When you send a shit and we review it. What else we got? Um, we have merch coming out soon. We're doing our yeah, merch pictures this, this week. And uh, um, follow us on all social media platforms at The Real Spin Spill, except Twitter, which is Sip and Spill 1. And give us a five-star rating because we're some five-star bitches. And the and girls are back at it again with another messy-ass episode of Sip and Spill where we create conversations. Oh, wow. Sip and wine. I go by the name of Thub motherfucking Sammy. And I'm Ambitious Positive Vibes Only, Tere. All right. So today we have a very, very special guest. Introduce yourself, nigga. Oh, yeah. I'm D-Maddox. I go by that Mattis kid on Instagram. My name D A T M A T T I X K I D D, and I'm a party promoter. Okay, okay. where do you promote for? I'm at Chemistry right now, Chemistry Lounge. This is ghetto. It's getting better. Is it? Yeah, is it? yeah, yeah. It's getting better. I they got a new just spot. Promote for therapy for a little bit, and that was ghetto too. Was it therapy? No, nah, I went therapy. It was uh, Capri. Capri. <laughs> nah, but Capri, Capri was wasn't ghetto. bad though. Capri was bad. Heck no, nah, you must be thinking ghetto. about something else. No, I worked at Capri. Capri you was so ghetto. right. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ghetto. All right. So there's a little thing that we do just to get to get y'all listening up a little bit. It's called Word Association. We got from L Magazine. We're gonna say a word. Are you gonna sing or rap the word that has to do with the word we're saying? Who going first? You. It's who's going second? Doing it. You. Oh, okay. Who's going okay, third? Okay. You. <laughs> Only you. Oh, okay. You know cool. 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 Let's do it's it. Our, let's it's let's the icebreakers for you. They know us. Right. My first word is somebody. Some oh damn. Somebody in my home. Huh? I don't know. I don't know the words. <laughs> you don't song? listen to songs? I do, but somebody. Damn, that's terrible. Okay. Beep. All right, your word. <laughs> my word is woman. See, I got a woman. And she's innocent. That's Eric Bellinger. I don't know if y'all listen to. Can Eric you finish? Bellinger. Can you can you sing it? Cause I don't. I'm trying to figure out. I'm not a singer, but look, look, look. Yeah, I got a woman, and she innocent until we intimate. Okay. Can and you I think y'all like that. I, it really sounds like he's trying to give us some poetry. Right. Like, it go by. It go like. See, I got a woman. Hey. And she innocent. Hey. Until we intimate. Hey. Oh. oh. <laughs> That's it. That's all yeah, I'm gonna give y'all. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I'm gonna say I was definitely thinking about Ray Charles. I got a woman. <laughs> oh, I forgot hey, about that. One. That was good. That was good. That was good. I but that's how you that. started. That's why I was like, I was like, are you singing the song I'm singing? Okay. <laughs> Last <laughs> word is sweet. Sweet lady. Won't you be my sweet lover? Uh. All night. That's it. That's it. That's it. I, I get it. All right. You did a great job besides the first one. All right. So let's get into some fucking wine fast. We're getting into some tea time. 
Tea time. So today, I unfortunately went to that same black owned uh, liquor store that I it's said I'm going to go to. It's not unfortunate. We like black owned business during <laughs> Black History support. Month. I love. No, it's unfortunate to me because I feel like they they overprice everything and it's ridiculous. I understand that you have to make a profit, but the 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 price difference is just. It's I like feel 40, like you can dollars, but I feel like you can't talk about someone's profit margin because you don't know what they're getting it at, though. So I'm like, and, and that's not my problem. I feel like. Pricing something $20 over But you, over you the, made a choice to go there. I, I did make a choice. That's what I said. Unfortunately, I made a choice to go over here. So it's still an unfortunate choice, but it's here. So this is called Han. Um, it's a P- Pinot Noir. It is a 2019 bottle. It has 14.5% alcohol by the volume. Um, it says that it's going to be a bright cherry, strawberry, and plum flavors with a hint of spice. So let's see what it's going to taste like. It's twisty. I'm gonna say I usually like pinots, so hopefully. Shit do the job. Say what? Say the shit do the job. It should. I like. I feel like I ain't never had a red wine that did me wrong. I like pinots. Um, I wasn't gonna get a white wine, but I couldn't. I didn't have time to chill it. So next time, I'm just gonna be prepared and buy like four wines at a time, so I don't have to keep doing this. What I'm not going to do is ever pull up with a fucking white wine, though. So I appreciate you for doing it for us, because yeah, you got to do the red wine. I'm gonna yeah, say I'm, not a, I like I'm a red wine hoe, and you know. Yeah, I gotta try this uh, uh, this wine called Six Grapes. Six Grapes. Yeah, it says it says total wines. It's okay. called Six it's Grapes. Good. Yeah, it's like 19. percent Oh, that's high. And one thing about it, I love feeling sexy after wine because I'd be like, I'm about to fuck on. Yeah, yeah I ain't gonna lie, you are gonna feel very good after that. I, of course, 90 percent alcohol in the okay, same. Let's try volume. it. Cheers let's to see, another see. messy ass episode the smell's giving me of Sip and Spill. Oh. The smell is definitely giving me communion. It does get communion. It tastes like communion wine. Oh, this is fucking <laughs> awful. Yeah, this <laughs> is fucking disgusting. <laughs> <That's terrible. laughs> Y'all, yeah, huh? Throw this in the trash. Actually, I'm, this- I'm confusion. I hope you did not pay over $15 for this. I paid $25 for this. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And I bet they put favorite on that, huh? Like, this is probably a $12 this is really bottle. This fucking nasty. <laughs> this tastes like this piss is, water. This is fucking disgusting. Yo. Han, you, you fucked this shit up. All Maybe the after way a up. couple of drinks, it tastes better. I don't Actually, know if I want that for me. Can you get the bottle? Let's put some liquor in this. I, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like this at all. So let's get into the motherfucking tea time. Uh, Kim and Ye. Yo, I feel like we talk about them so so much, but there's always something that they he fucking doing. Or actually, th- it's always something they're both doing. I'm gonna say I don't think it's just him. I feel like the narrative is always him because people want to attack his mental health. But I feel like Kim is a Kardashian, so within her own right, messiness is gonna follow her. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like most recently about her saying that um, Kanye West has a hit out on her, it's pretty outlandish. <laughs> like. I don't even know because I've been in love like a few times, you know, but where do you get in the road of being in love with someone where you are first in love with them and then you hate them? Like, how does that even transition to? Because I'm like, even people that she hates him. I don't think she hates him. I think you absolutely. I feel like she's disgusted with him. I don't know Kim like that. So I don't know what her feelings are towards him. But what I, I all I know is from what I see. And I feel like it's just I I thought their divorce was going to be super cordial. Why? because when when they first did not a divorce, it seemed like she was still supporting him. She was still going to his show. She was still doing bringing her her kids to his show. So I thought it was gonna be like a cordial divorce. And I don't know how it changed. That's what I'm sudden, saying. How does it go from being supportive? Y'all are still breaking up. He doing all this. How does it? How does that light switch? Yeah. Stand in the media make you more money. You, That's you get, true. You getting sales. They getting sales off of this. The more you're in the media, they want people want to go check you out. Oh. Who was Kanye? Who so was Kim? This is all like not real. It's publicly some. They're not really. Yeah, a lot of this stuff is all like set up and planned. Yeah. I personally feel like. But that. I feel like, why would you use your personal life? Couldn't it be something then, else? I feel like if that's the case, why would he put his daughter on the line? I I feel like if you are just using it for media sales, why? Okay, so what happened was, um, North has a TikTok with Kim, and the, the guidelines for TikTok is have to be thirteen or over. I think North is like eight or nine. I'm not sure how old she is. And Connie was like, he posted a picture of North and he was like, this is my first divorce. How do I get my daughter off of TikTok? Because I don't want her on TikTok. I, I, I. Like, he doesn't feel comfortable with his North on TikTok, which I completely agree Understand, with. Understand, yeah. She is eight years old. There is no reason. I don't think anyone under 14 should have social media. 
Yeah, they doing she's that for act, money. They definitely eight. doing that she's money. Eight. Eight. Yeah, I don't think anyone under 14 should have social media. Even though the, the account is with her mom and with her mom's division. But wasn't there a post where she was like showing the house and like people were like, hey, Northy, you know, show me the closet. Show me this. Show me the safe. Write a check for me. Like, she's eight years old. Yeah, she's going to So do what it. about Blue Ivy? Blue Ivy do the same thing. But you got to think about it. How did, how, I don't know what she got, but I don't know how old is she. Like, she on social media. She, I think so. Uh, I feel like, but I feel like her mother's black. Okay. <laughs> That's I feel I like a yeah. Blue, Blue I Ivy has her own social media. I don't account. think that she does, and I feel like if she did, it would be more supervised than Kim but Kardashian's I child. Has one. I think if she does have her own Instagram, let's see. Does she have her own Instagram? Like it's not, not her one. Instagram. Just say like, see if she has like a social media. Just say social media. Yeah. I don't think Blue Ivy has one. I mean, she, I mean, I feel like everyone for their kid has one specifically. But but well, I'm they saying, make them for their kids when they're younger. But the parent controls. Yeah, that's different. Yeah. I'm talking about yeah, I'm talking like a TikTok or something. Well, that's actually that's, not, that's not even fan. hers. That's a fan that's account. A, that's, a fa- that's a fan account. So she doesn't even have her own Instagram. She doesn't have her own social media. As she shouldn't. She's ten. A child shouldn't have their own social media. Account, like I'm gonna but, say, but now we're in a different time now. We're I'm gonna say, have y'all time. seen that no, one thing? They a were child like, not have social media. What about that little girl that was a rapper? Her parents are was, running are, it. Are running oh, they was running it. it. And her I'm parents saying, are running it, that's different. But if her doing it herself, I don't think that's cool. I don't think that's all right. And respectfully, I just feel like Kim is going to give North the free range to do what she wants to because she wants her kids to be free thinkers, innovators. And I mean, her mom's Kris Jenner and she's making money off her fucking kids. Yeah. So I'm just saying like mother, like daughter. I'm not saying that Kim is like her, but I'm just saying you're looking at your child as the next cash cow. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like there's a difference between mothers, black children who have white mothers and have black children who have black mothers. Black children who have white mothers and black children who have black mothers. And you can tell North is being raised by a white mother. Facts. <laughs> you you right. definitely can tell. Definitely. <laughs> um, so let's go move on to Euphoria. I'm a huge fan of Euphoria. Do you watch Euphoria? I just kind of got into it, so I really don't know that You're much about one? it. No, nah, I skipped the season two. I didn't watch the season Why would you do that? Crying. Why would you do that? Cause look, I seen it that on. That makes no sense. I seen it on, and it caught who, my eye. Who does that? Who just skips a whole entire first season of a sh- y'all? You do that? I skipped like three seasons of Snowfall and started on season four, and it was good. I did amazing. the same thing for Power. Fucking amazing. Okay. I yeah, feel like I feel I'm, like I'm a detail person, so I like to get. I don't need the details. You want the backstory? I, I, want the I don't want the fucking backstory. Get me everything. into the thick of it, because I'm here now. I want to know what's going now. on right now. That's not me. I, I'm a very uh, information type person. But anyway, so Euphoria is. Um, if you're not familiar with it, is that this character? Played by Zendaya called Rue, and she is a fucking crackhead, drug addict, crazy. Like, sometimes I watch that show, I feel like Zendaya is a real crackhead because I'm like, she plays that part so fucking good. But I, I mean, was, the acting, everyone, everyone is a good fucking actor because Cassie. Yeah. But whenever Zendaya nah, I ain't gonna comes lie. on, Cassie is crazy. Played the fuck out of that role. Nah, I said, my little baby. That just came out was that Zendaya showed her, showed the whole cast who the fuck But she did that in season one already. You don't remember that one episode where they were chasing her the entire episode? Mm-hmm. Look at. She did that already. So it's already like, it's just showing, I guess it's like just re-showing, you know, but addicts. Oh, in this was different re-showing. though. Well, she, this was different. Like, yeah, if she, she don't get an like Emmy off this episode, you know, it's racism at this point. Um, so, so what's going on is people are saying that they're glorifying um, doing drugs, you know, the D-A-R-E. Were you part of D.A.R.E.? Did you do that? Elementary. The that, yeah. to school. They're kids in my school and they told me not to do drugs, but I still do drugs. But, um... <laughs> So, weed. Let me be clear here. This is weed. <laughs> you speak for yourself. <laughs> I am speaking for myself. It's just... I thought you said we. You said we do. Uh, she said we. Oh, I thought she said, I thought she said we do drugs. <laughs> we. I said we do drugs. I no. said, bitch, speak for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just weed. But um, they're saying that they're high school school and glorifying doing drugs. And honestly, I don't see them glorifying drugs. I feel like they're showing yeah. what a true drug addict goes to. I've never, I've never had a tip really see a close at, drug addict close in person but my mom works at a drug rehab at the detention center and it's like i from stories from her i'm like okay this is really like you are you do have the worst out of yourself whenever you do drugs and i feel like they're showing that like they're showing what happens when you do drugs i don't feel like they're glorifying it. i think they're showing the real scope of what comes with being a drug addict and then yes, they no. and then they explain it at the end, like, oh, so if you need drug, like rehab or something like that, they'll let you know. Yeah. But I also think that it's realistic because realistically, how many kids do we know that were in high school struggling with drug abuse? Even if it wasn't like any. opioids, I, I knew Maybe. a lot of kids. If Even if like I think they're going to the most extreme with like pills. Yeah. A lot of kids my age when I was in high school were fucking alcoholics. 
Oh, like, yeah. They go to fucking they parties. Smoke, binge. Drink. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So I feel like they're showing the worst part of it of like pills, but I feel like pills, we don't get into that until they're a lot older. Yeah. yeah. But I'm saying like, well, it depends on depends on your race. And the, and the, yeah, and, facts. Yeah, white people. is crazy. And you have to think about it. At a certain level, people have the reason why they're showing her addiction is because it's attached to a trauma that she has not dealt with, mm-hmm. and that's her losing her father. Yeah. So it's like you have to understand. You have to treat the problem to understand why she's an addict. Like I yeah. feel like her father fucking father died, and now she always keeps saying that I fucking miss my dad. I miss yeah. my fucking dad. So it's like, can we treat the problem before you try to keep taking her to rehab? Because she's gonna keep relapsing because you're not fixing the root of why she's out of doing drugs no one just wakes up one day is like oh yeah i'm a drug addict it's like a progression of doing things and she started it when she was taking care of her fucking father and he had pills by him mm-hmm. but she didn't want to go to rehab they, her mama tried to help her but she talked to her mama crazy i would never talk to my mama honestly like that. i'm like all them is all them mama black at this point she's really is not at this point black. she is a submissive and she grabbed her mama about to whoop on my ass <laughs> she's a submissive white woman at this point because i'm just like if that yeah. was my mom would have kicked me punched Granted, I yeah, I wouldn't even got the cursor right out. My mom would tell my. I'm gonna say I still sometimes find myself getting scared saying "fuck" in front of my mom, and trust me, like that's my go-to word. So I can definitely say they are (laughs) that she's not a black mama. She's not a black mama at all. But I really don't feel like they're glorifying drug abuse at all. all. Mm. I feel like they're showing the reality of it. And honest, but the only thing I would say about Euphoria is I I see way too much white dick. I feel like it's nobody Euphoria white dick. (laughs) I'm tired of seeing all these pink penises. I feel like there's like a two rule, a two pink penis rule per episode for me. There was Since, no dicks this episode. This episode, but the last four episodes, there was a, there was a dick. Just one. No, there was a dick every single episode. I know, but I was like, just one. It's not like it was like two dicks in one night. I don't care. I see there's too many dicks, too many white dicks. I mean, I don't it's know. too much. Th- I don't. I don't want to see it. Heard. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go move on to the mayor. Did you and the mayor of New York have this in common? I like to call white people crackers. Well, <laughs> I'm going to take the lead on this one. Take the lead on this one. <clears throat> so the mayor, his name is Eric Adams. So there was a video, I guess, that resurfaced of him making racial slurs. And for me, I mean, because you know, three episodes ago that we had to edit out. We're gonna be, they we're don't gonna, know. They don't know. But, I, but I'm going to say, you know what? I'm 10 toes down on everything that I do. So a few episodes back, I made a quote unquote racial slur, as we shall say. But y'all will never find it. It was, it, was, it, was, it was it was it. I thought it was. Was it? Yes. It was well, in my mind, it was three weeks ago. So anyways, like I said, y'all will never find the video. It would never resurface unless LP got it out for me. Unless LA got it out for me. That's the only way that y'all will see that that footage. But. I too am um, engaged in some racially slurs. Is cracker a racial slur? Not really. Charlemagne say really, it all the time. I don't think that is. It is. That's what I was trying to get to. Yeah. What my problem is, why are black people hold to a higher regard for saying things like cracker or, you know. While Joe Rogan can say nigger over nigger, and nigga. Y'all, y'all can literally say whatever the fuck yeah. y'all want to. And then y'all can just like, <laughs> You know, so okay. I just feel like why, where does the sensitivity stop? Like, yeah. why are you so sensitive over a cracker? Do you look like a cracker? Do you taste like a cracker? Do why mean, are you so upset? Do you know what a cracker is? So the cracker came from the word from the slave with um, the slave masters, not slave masters, the overseer of the plantation will whip the slaves. So they called him a cracker? Cracker because he would crack their So backs. politically, it's correct. So politically, it's not even racist. No, it's politically, I mean, it's correct. If we're calling you a cracker, y'all are still cracking that shit on our fucking backs. Yeah. Even in Black History Month. So I feel it's like respectfully, Black History Month, y'all. And, and I'm going to be as black as I want to fucking be. Do y'all see me? So with that being said, um, if I don't y'all think see crackers this, are racial slurs. I don't think uh, so. I don't think that black people can be racist. We don't have the power to be oppressive. So with that being said, take it to the bank. And y'all can talk to me when I yeah. get to the fucking top. So I black people can't be racist. We can't. Black people cannot be just racist. prejudice. We, like, we can definitely, yeah, 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 but yeah. we cannot be racist. racist. We don't have the power, power to, to be racist. racist. Exactly, and we already exactly. had an episode about that. So I feel like someone gonna find this and they gonna edit it to their liking. But guess what? My DMs are always open. And I guess Not what? Mine, mine are and guess what? <laughs> I can spit that fire right fucking back. Go, so to, my, go to my podcast page. Don't come to my personal page about shit I do. I'm going to say, yeah, go to the Instagram page for her, though. Go to the Twitter for me. Because I ain't going to be defying them battles on fucking Instagram. I'm going to just look at it. Your message was read at 10 a.m. Right. I hate when niggas come to me over something I said on my podcast page, on my personal page. Bitch, I don't know her. She just be talking. <laughs> like, who I am on my personal page and on my podcast. You two different people. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
<laughs> All right, so let's get to the show. Um, we're going to talk about show. masculine and feminine, feminine energy. energy part two. So last week we kind of went into it, but not really in details about masculine and feminine energy. We talked about um, there is a greater yang, a lesser yang, a greater yang or lesser yang, like the most feminine, the least feminine. All the qualities when it comes to masculinity, but we didn't really go like to like deep into, into it. Yeah. So um, what I looked it up and it said, what is masculine energy? So masculine energy is um, they are in doing mode. They're logical minded, focused on achieving, um, planning. They're confident and the goal driven and they're in balance. Are they aggressive, confrontational? And they micromanage and they're competitive, which I mean, I've seen myself in a lot of those qualities, even though it's masculine energy. I feel like I have a lot of masculine energy also. Um, and you saw you looked up the feminine energy. Yeah. So for with hers being the doing in the masculine in the feminine energy, it is the being. And that is when you're receiving your intuitive mind. It's internal. This is when you are receptive, fluid. You are allowing, filling and you are empathetic, vulnerable and creative. And your imbalances in this energy is you are powerless, manipulative, needy, oversensitive and codependent. Ooh, so it's it's exactly what I'm saying when you say here both of them it's like I feel like it fluctuates between what you can do because I'm like there's been situations where I have manipulative but is that a masculine or is that a feminine thing there's been times where I've been codependent and I'm like so why is all those things that are powerless because they said powerless we kept saying it's sexist of how they say the energies are mm -hmm. I feel do like you, you gotta have a balance though but do you feel like when it comes to energies that it's very sexist like because they say it doesn't have a gender but they very but much they make a specific it. gender like yes. literally they'll say energy doesn't have a gender he is this she is this. like it's just it's it's they still gender us like for example like open the door and stuff like that like a man's supposed to do that you know they say that all the time or a woman, you gotta open, pull a woman chair out and stuff like that. That's masculinity. Mm -hmm. Is so, that masculine? I feel like that's 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 what you taught. Like you know, the man's supposed to pay all the bills, you pay the rent and all that. The woman's supposed to be at home and cook and clean. So it's like that's that's what you taught. Do you believe in I the was traditional? Never taught I was supposed to be at home and cook and clean. I was never taught that as well. That's yeah. that's so, that's what that was like. Do you believe in the traditional nuclear family then? Nah. Okay. Okay. All right. So I feel like I always hear about divine femininity. Femininity. It's like, oh, the divine feminine. But so what does divine masculinity even fucking mean? Does it even exist? Somewhat, because you got some people that take charge. Like you want to be in control, and you just got to have that power. You got to have that power over whoever it is. Why though? That's so weird. Like, why do you feel like you have power over someone? But, you know, some people are taught that, you know, some people are taught that a man needs to be this. You need to be in control of your household and uh -huh. all this, that, and other. And then sometimes when a woman come in, in place and a woman doing all this, a man can't take that. Okay. So what do you consider as masculine energy and what do you consider as feminine energy? Me being in control of your situation, that's the masculinity. What? Look, I, I feel, look, I just, that's what I feel. Like, you've been in control. Like, that's the masculinity. Like, you feel like. You empowered, and then like the female female part is like you just more so caring and all that of the situations. But can a man not be caring? Yeah, and you still can. Be that's, that's what I'm, yeah, yeah, you can. That's what but I'm saying. But why does everything when it comes to masculine energy have to be like Macho, control, top control? Why yeah. does it have to be that? Like I said, at the end of the day, you always want to be powerful. Like but, you got to be. But why? Open. But no, why? You're not answering why you, you said that's what you are po you're wanting to do, but why is that something that you want? Because sometimes by nature, some n men are not very masculine. Some men are very submissive sometimes by nature. Yeah, yeah. I and I feel like he doesn't take away from your masculinity when you're not controlling. Yeah, and it then it depends on how you raised. Also, mm -hmm. like say, since I was raised like with some people, not everybody. Some people raised with like all women. You'll get that get that different uh feeling and you'll understand like how that works okay so what are some what are like list off some like masculine qualities and like feminine qualities he did he said that men are in control he said women are nurturing that's literally that's what he it? said yeah that's... okay so do you feel like you have both yeah because like i I, I respect my mom and my sister so i see how they are when it come to me because i know sometimes i'm not the best person 
Like when I get safe as I get mad or something like that mm -hmm. and I can't take stuff. My mama will try to calm me down. Like my brother will get mad. I'm going to go back and forth with him. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to just sit there and like, man, relax. We ain't going to talk stuff out. We don't, we don't really just be talking stuff. We'll wait for a little bit. And then like later on, we act like nothing ever happened. Okay. So do you feel like you have both masculine and feminine energy? Yeah, of course. It depends on the situation. Okay. So what are your feminine energy that you feel like you have? Sometimes I care too much. Why is that a feminine <laughs> energy though? No, it, it's really not. But you know, women are more caring than like men. You know, men we we just be like, mm, okay, it's I don't whatever. actually feel like women are more caring. I feel like you it's be, so? no. I just really feel like it depends on the human. Because I've met some bitches that are cold and got no fucking feelings in their bones. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So I feel like when y'all keep saying it's a natural thing for women, no, it's not. Just like when y'all say nurturing. I've never thought about having a child until like probably a year ago. So that's what I'm saying. When y'all say these things are natural for women, even though we're taught to it, taught to have that, just like you're taught to be controlling or taught to, uh, uh women are taught to be nurturing. Cause I'm like, no one ever was like, I'm going to play with Barbie dolls. I wasn't a Barbie doll playing bitch. I was the bitch that was this. That's why I had to be a, why don't you be a fucking lady? Cause I was taught to be in the dirt. You want to race me nigga? That's literally the kind of little yeah, girl I, I was. Football and stuff. Yeah. yeah exactly. So that's the kind of shit I was doing. So I'm just saying when you're saying that we, that's natural, it's not natural. It's how yeah. it's all case by case because. Case by case. Yeah. That's what I was saying. It's it depends on how you natural. was raised. Say what? I feel like it depends on like how you was raised and like how you was brought up. Okay. So my question is, do you feel like toxic masculinity exists? Because we were talking about, and let me just give you a background. Background is, it is, it's defined as a type of masculinity that advocates for a certain type of behavior that describes a real man. And that's pretty much like real men don't cook. Real men don't do this. Oh, like, they don't wash like, no dishes like, and stuff like, like yeah, that. Let's talk about what masculine energy is. Because from what I looked up, it says that they are um, logical mind. Oh, did I ever say that? No, no. No, not you. Yeah. So yeah, how do you feel about that? Have you ever felt like you had to be super macho? That's that's really what it's going back to. Because when we were Me talking personally, about this, no. You never? No, nah, not really. Do you feel like it exists though? That's what that's yeah, the, of course that exists. You got a lot of people like that. Okay, so do there you was this like guy. Somewhat. It depends on the person. Like everything just depends on the person. And I, I feel like it does. Cause you got some people that gotta be macho, just gotta do this and other. Cause like for example, I know somebody, this guy said he don't wash dishes. He don't do none of that. All he do is take out the trash. Like the woman's supposed to clean up the bathroom, wash the dishes and cook. Mm -hmm. The man only he only thing he's supposed to do is take out the trash and that's it. So when I think of toxic masculinity, I think of men who feel like they can't cry, men who feel like they can't help help with housework, men who feel like they have to provide everything, yeah. men who feel like they their only job is to be a breadwinner and nothing else, and not have emotions and not have communi communicate or anything that they deem as feminine. And that exists. Okay. Because you got people like that, like like what I was saying earlier, you are taught that. Some people are raised that way, like, oh, the man's So you think toxic to masculinity is taught? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't that's... feel like it's a, a way to show off? That that too. Like, mm -hmm. you want to show that you can do all this, that, and other. And you but what do you got to prove to your bitch? You ain't got to prove nothing. You ain't got to prove nothing I, to no, nobody. You got to prove something to me. You got to prove, you got to prove a lot to me. I want to I wanna know if you can, you know. Hold be, it down. Hold it down and be the man that you say you are. So, yeah. But that perpetuates to toxic to me, masculinity. You don't have yeah. to prove to me that you're macho and that you're a man and that you, you're you tough. But you have to prove to me that, you know, you're, what you say is what you're actually going to do. So, that, when, so when it happens, so he, he, he tell you, you don't want you doing nothing. You don't got to work. You don't got to do nothing. You okay with I that? I am absolutely not comfortable with a man who feels like I don't have to work. I don't want that. If you tell me you want me to stay at home, I don't like that. Yeah, like don't I, don't, I don't want you working. I just want you at home, just going grocery shopping and all that. You okay with I that? I absolutely don't like that. Yes. I don't want to be a stay at home mom. I don't, I don't, one, I don't even know if I want children. So yeah, that lifestyle is definitely not for me. I am, I definitely want to work. Yeah. I definitely want to contribute to the household. Do I feel like I have to pay all the bills? Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> but I, I definitely want to be a, a member, like a, you know, you want to help in some type of way, be a right? Partner. It's a partnership. You yeah. know, so just like I'm helping you with finance, what what men are supposed to do, the financial stuff, 
the same way you're supposed to help me with the wet woman supposed to be the domestic stuff. Yeah. So I, I and a lot of the times I see that when um people are in relationships, it's the women still working and still doing ninety percent of the housework while the men work and then go to sleep and that's it. Hats off to women, man. Y'all women strong. Y'all always there. I don't want to be strong. I want to yeah. be a delicate white woman. I want to be a dependent white woman. I don't want to be strong. I, I hate that narrative that we're supposed to be strong and we're supposed to be doing... No, I don't want to be that. I know, but it's just how it is. Like you I know, don't want to be strong. I'm you not know, strong. I know, and that's... Like, women are delicate. Like You got to treat them with care, but we to. don't. We don't sometimes. Y'all yeah. don't at all. Yeah. So, we had a quiz that will help us decide... Because you say that you are more on what scale on the spectrum? I'm balanced. We, You're balanced? We're going to keep it balanced. Okay, so we're going to... I we're hope gonna so. Question, what, are you, what are your feminine energy again? You care too much? That's the only thing? That's all I can think about at the moment. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what this quiz say. I think, a lo- I think a lot of men have way more feminine energy than they want to admit. But they, men see femininity as a negative thing. So because they... They make that, you look weak. They see femininity as a negative thing. So because they do that, they don't want to associate themselves with femininity. But I feel like a man needs both masculine and feminine energy. And yeah. actually a pretty equal balance of both. Because if you want to relate to a woman and have a relationship with women, you have to under also understand that woman. And the only way to do that is to also have that feminine energy. So this alpha, you know, alpha male, this, uh, what do you call it? High value alpha male type shit. That's bullshit. Yeah. Those kind of, I don't think those kind of men have successful good relationship, good happy healthy relationships with women i thought they're always end up with women who are you know kind of resent them they're not really happy in the relationship and you got men we don't cry like you know you just automatic all oh, men don't cry you know like say for your baby cry. like my little nephew like i'll be getting on him all the time hey stop all that crying that's why why stop doing that to him I don't like this. You, you know when you do that, you're telling him he's not allowed to show his emotions. So when he gets an adult, he gets to be an adult, and he gets in a relationship with a woman, and she wants him to show his emotions, he doesn't know how. Yeah. Because he's taught that he can't do that. It's perfectly okay for men to cry, and I feel like you should teach your boys it's okay to cry. Let them cry. There's nothing wrong with that. I'll be telling, hey, y'all stop all that no, crying. What if he bought cry. small stuff? I'll take a it toy It doesn't matter if he's crying about a penny fall on the floor. Let him cry. <laughs> he's a child. You know what I'm saying? Okay, maybe, maybe it's me because I'm not a crier and all that extra. But you can't. You should be crying is good. And I and I say this as someone who's not a crier. Yeah. I fucking hate crying. I feel like crying makes me a weak ass bitch. But I have to remind myself, like, you know what? It's okay to release those emotions. You know. So uh, you got the quiz pulled up? Yeah, I had it pulled. <laughs> I, I had it pulled up. Okay. <laughs> like. My bad, my bad. No, go ahead, go ahead. I'm it's sorry. Fine. <laughs> so on the quiz, it's okay. So we're gonna ask you. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't even know how many questions this shit was. It's I didn't about read 20 the whole thing. <laughs> it, it's enough to help us try to decipher what's going on. So I'm gonna try to read fast. I'm from the Midwest, so you know I'm just catch on if I catch on. It says, okay. On your way to work, you mentally review your goals for the day in your mind that you plan out that you're gonna get done. Yes or no? No. Okay. On your way to work, you check in with yourself about how you're feeling and get intuitive and sense how you're going to be ready for work. Yeah. Okay. As you are in the mindset of your work day or a particular project, you focus on your to-do list and take the next step while you're in the moment. Nah. Okay. As you're in the mindset, why well, is a lot about things about work? You know, like, I'll be do, when I'm you on my way to work, I'm listening okay, to music. Okay, well, I'm not I'm worried just, about nothing. We'll just like put it in the scope of things. You reflect on big pictures and then your next project next when trusting that it would all come together. Eventually, yeah. So that's a yes? Okay. During lunch with friends, you love getting support with friends bitch. and that's always take bitch. advice about your work or relationship issues. Nah. Okay. During a lunch with friends, you don't mind sharing what's going on in your life. Nah. Okay. No. Nah. What do niggas do at brunch? Nah. You said at brunch. I thought she said at lunch at work. I mean, no. I just said lunch. I didn't. Oh, my I bad. Said, it, says, it says lunch with. It says lunch with friends. Oh, yeah. lunch with friends. Brunch, lunch with friends. Y'all, y'all don't talk about life. Yeah, we do. Every now and then, it depends on what's going on. So, say if it's like the Super Bowl or something like that, we're not talking about life. We talking about sports. <laughs> so that's is that still a yes or no? Just put no. <laughs> okay, so you get a phone call from a stressed out family member. You give them a piece of advice and then call them later. 
I'm bad at calling people back. So, so you're going to say, say no. Oh, yeah. You're such a fucking man. When you get a phone call from a stressed out family member, you listen and empathize, empathize and find a nice way to get off the phone with them 20 minutes later. Sounds like niggas. Just say yes. No. <laughs> oh, so no? Okay. So <laughs> no, I'm, I do. I do. Yeah, I'm okay, like, so I'm going to yes. call you right back. I'm going to be wanting to hit okay. it all the time. All right. When it nears the end of your workday, you feel tired, but decide to push through and focus on this so you can leave on time. Nah, I really don't care. That's real. Most people. When it nears the end of your workday, you feel tired and it, why is all this shit about work? Everything's about. It would have to change the words on that. So yeah, you take a a fifteen minute break and breathe, make some tea. Of course, you're not making no fucking tea and leave early. That's what it's saying. You like you just it's that you're prioritizing your mental health. Yeah, I don't take breaks during work except for lunch. What do you want to when you want to get some exercise? You select your workout based on how your body is feeling right now. Nah, it depends on the day. We got leg day, arm day. When you want to get some exercise, you select your workouts based on your fitness goals. I guess, yeah. Okay. Having dinner and dishing about your day with your partner, you want to talk about challenges of your day or your week? Mm, that's in the middle. Sometimes you do want to talk yes, about that. No, Sometimes sir. you don't. Yes, yeah, let's just go with yeah. Let me just go do <laughs> I'm yeah. I'm trying to get into it way too oh, much. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Having dinner and dishing about your day with your partners, you want to talk about what you accomplished? Yeah. Talk about accomplished, but not you don't want to talk about your challenges. Just a man. As you relax and get ready to sleep, <laughs> you quiet your mind by organizing the house and making sure things are ready to go for tomorrow. That's a no. Nah. I'm gonna say I didn't even <laughs> have to finish that. Yeah, I don't even think Organize about that. Organize the house. <laughs> Hold on, how many questions we got left? Damn. Oh, it's only three more. Three more. Okay, let's we, get we, through. Right. Let's get. Let's push through. Got to see it through. As you relax and get ready for sleep, you quiet your mind and you meditate, trusting that tomorrow will we'll unfold. No. This. Stuff. That's a no. He don't meditate. <laughs> I don't. When faced with a difficult decision, you close your eyes, take a deep breath, and imagine that. That's a no. That's a no as well. Yeah, she know me too well already. <laughs> when faced with a difficult decision, you make a list of pros and cons to weigh out your options. Ooh. Oh, it depends on the situation. Let's let's go with no. I'm gonna say let's go with let's go with the truth. In terms of your career, you have a strict plan in mind and what you're gonna be doing ten years from now. Oh yeah. Oh, I love that. Okay, in terms of your career, you are open to life surprises that are willing to change your course if you feel like it's needed. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Okay. You have a dominant feminine energy. You have feminine energy. Dang. So we did that whole test. Oh, that's cool. And, but no, no, we're okay with that. No, it says, I don't say, how fabulous is that? You seem to be more in tune with your feminine energy. Effortlessly attracting what you want, creating and enjoying the process rather than being goal oriented, connected to your emotional life and relating to others by listening, sharing and nurturing. How does it feel to know you have feminine dominant energy? It don't bother me at all. I'm comfortable okay. I love that I for you. I, love, I, I literally am. love that for you. So we showed him a video of a woman asking him what is sub- what is a submissive woman? What is um, a dominant woman? And I and the man immediately went to violence. I feel like why is it? One, I, my question is, do you feel women as your equal? Do you feel women are your equal? We all equal. We all equal in the, in the world. Yeah, we all Do equal. you feel women are yeah, your yeah, equal? Yeah, yeah, we equal? So when you feel women are your equal, do you immediately go to beating their asses? No. So I, why is it when men think, oh, we're equal, that means I can beat your ass? That's, that's immediately what that man went to. He was like, oh, now that you're equal to me, I can, that means I can hit you like a man. He he, ignorant. I yeah. think he ignorant. I want. Yeah, I wouldn't take it that far. Okay, so that far. do you? So she said that. What is it about a dominant woman that he feels threatened by? He feel less of a man. Okay. He feel less of a man. Do you feel a, less of a man, less of a man when there's a dominant woman that you're dealing with? I haven't dealt with this, so I don't know. You only deal with submissive women. Not nah, look, look. So for example, like my girl right now, she she always offer help, but I tell her no, I got it. You think I'm? You think I'm being like that? Is, is that is that that's quality of submissive? <laughs> like, no, nah, like that's understand. that's just a partner, in my opinion. <laughs> like if my man's going through something, I'm gonna ask you what I can do too. Yeah, I don't understand. And how would you feel? He never tell you. Yeah, like I don't know. Most times, I would say most times I do get a no, but it's like you don't stop pushing that. You don't stop yeah. pushing the help. So I mean, I don't think that makes her submissive. Because she asked you to help. No. Oh, no, no, my bad. I got the question mixed up. My bad. Okay, so we said, what is men's issue with dominant women? And you said that they are, you know, they feel unless emasculated, women, yeah. unless then. But I'm like, you, we said, how would you feel? And you said you never dealt with one, but how do you think you would handle that? 
I don't know. That's tough. Really? You don't yeah. you agree with a dominant woman? No. Wow. <laughs> but what does a dominant woman look like to you? Because respectfully, most women in our generation nowadays, unless, in my opinion, I don't want to like d disregard the pick me's because I feel like they very much are. So if you were to date someone that was headstrong and she knew what she wanted and she was very vocal about the things that she wanted and she's very goal oriented, is that a problem for you? Because that's that is the definition of someone that is alpha. Nah, but not nowadays women are very strong. Like women, women exactly. on a, so, women on a grind. So, and that's considered masculine energy. Yeah. Someone that is goal oriented because they said that women are like feminine energy is the feeling. Masculine energy is the doing. So if you have someone that's a go getter, that's just like you. How is that a problem? At the same time, a guy want to be in control. Like it, it, that's where I all come back to the guy want to still be in, in control, control and be the head of the household. What? You want to be the head of the in household. Control. What are you controlling? I'm going to say, what household, my nigga? You're not even my fucking husband yet. How, how she, you, what she eats? What, what oh, she nah, does? Oh, no, no, when? Like, what, what are you controlling? What, what, is the, what is it that you're controlling? You got to be the man. What are you controlling? I wish this made sense <laughs> to us, because the reason I, why we brought so a man confused. on is for you to help us dissect why it's such a... Ish, why is control... Such, such why a, is control connected to your security? Yeah. Your security in a relationship. Goes back to what I was saying. That's how you. That's how you was taught. Like you was taught to be this. You was you taught to be that. What you're taught, but you, as a grown ass man, right now, with your own fucking mind, what does being controlling have to do with being masculine? Nothing. Nothing. Exactly. <laughs> because most women exactly. that most women that have masculine energy are not controlling. They're just very like vocal about what they want in life. Because I feel like I say I'm a very masculine energy person i have like my feminine energy for sure because i'm sexy you know i do the damn thing but i'm saying yeah. most times like i'm very like what's up nigga like what, what are we doing because i'm very vocal about it but even in the same way i don't want to be in a control of a relationship i don't want to be the ones like who's wearing the pants i don't ever want them to say oh ami's wearing the pants we're both wearing a skirt so how guys feel about that when you uh come to them um, like that? well i've actually only probably met two men that were okay with how i am and never wanted to change me and that's why i love them very dearly and um because most men do get intimidated yeah and i don't know why you're intimidated by me i'm five foot one but i just know my worth you, do y'all want someone that knows less than men like women who don't know their worth and that's what it boils down to. Y'all want someone is. that is okay to bend and shift to y'all because y'all want to break them down just to build them up. Yeah. You ain't going to break me like down. I'm already there. Who they can just mold. Y'all want to, y'all want to build a like, bitch. What is, what is it called? And the bitch like has already a, been made like when she met toy. you. Like a, what do you call those people who like control the puppets? Um, oh, no, either. What are they called? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Though? I know what you're talking what about. Called. It's Men like, like women who they can like control. That, that, that's a fact. That like is a fact. Be a puppet to them. And when there's a woman who's like, no, fuck that Puppy shit. Chirp. It's Puppy a, a chirp. He's a beta like male. Yeah. And I don't absolutely don't. I don't subscribe to that. I feel like for me, for you to to be with a woman like me, you have to be an alpha male. I can't be with no beta male because I'm going to run you over. So dating me, you have to be that manly man. I like very aggressive, like. But that's men's. also that's that's toxic masculinity when you're saying you need them to be a manly man. It's not. It's so not what you mean by that? Like, what, what, what you mean by that? I like guys who who are going to listen to me and also not let me run them over because easily I can run you over. I'm, I can easily talk over you and be like, oh, yeah, shut the fuck up. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to tell you shut the fuck up, but I can easily run you over. You can easily get intimidated by me, you know, because I'm very into myself. I know what I want. I know what I'm gonna, not going to do with. Uh, uh. So for you to be with me, you have to be that man's man and you don't. And I, and I don't feel like that makes you a beta male when you're with a woman that's dominant like me. And a lot of men are scared of that. They're like, oh, well, she 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 knows her words. She, she's too much. She talks over me. She talks too much. She's not going to let me do whatever I want. So it's like. And then that's when they come. Oh, you're too good for me. Facts. I've heard that. Someone, <laughs> when a you man tells you you're, you're too good for him, bitch, Believe run. him. Believe him. Bitch, a man's Cause, like, Because oh, you are. I, you, I can't even be with a woman like you. You're too Bitch, run. That just happened on Grownish. I don't know if y'all watched it. That happened on Grownish. Grownish. Yeah, I do. I love them. Yeah, that just happened. I love them, yeah. And, and I mean, I feel like respectfully they're on the same level, but, you know, he don't see it that way. Because a man's ego is the only thing he has. It is. It really is. I agree with so him. So there's ways to tap into <laughs> your femininity, which I, I don't really agree with any of this stuff, but I looked it up. Um, it says embrace your emotions. 
um, be open to receiving and also find routines that help you feel grounded. And that's ways to tap into your femininity. To me, the way to tap into your femininity is be your fucking self. I feel like who you are and what you, what makes you feel the most feminine is femininity. Whether it's shaking your ass, whether it's playing basketball, if it's cooking, or if it's watching TV, whatever makes you feel like you're that bitch is divine femininity to me. Yeah. So when I looked up how you tap into your masculine energy, it was like a lot of aggressive things as in take action, stand up for yourself, have structure, be decisive have strength, but they were not talking about physical strength. They were talking about just having mental strength. I know what you mean. And um, so it's pretty much just everything that's like more, like I said, men get, or the masculine energy always gets more empowering things. Yeah. Everything else that comes with feminine energy, it's like, bro, relax. It's like what, being indecisive, being Being emotional. decisive, being emotional, be intuitive with your feelings. Can can you be masculine with intuitive into your feelings? Because I feel like, I feel like the middle ground between masculine and feminine energy is self-awareness because I feel like you have to know when to let that energy let down and let some energy. Cause it's like, that's you're a, never going to meet yeah. someone that's good. Cause I'm like, if you're always bark, 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 and you never know how to let your guards down, then that's too masculine. Like the imbalance, it's like there, you it feel like the imbalance is cause you feel like you have something to prove. Yeah. yeah. I definitely don't want a man that's too masculine. Like, if you always feel like you have something to prove, I don't like Yeah, that. if I can't take you to the spa with me, if I can't, like, go and get my toes done with you, you way too masculine you for way me. way too masculine. If you feel like getting your nails done is gay, getting your eye, you know, like, dressing nice is gay, looking good is gay, smelling, like, no, that's too, that's too masculine for me. Not for, for a while, like, when I was younger, I'm like, Oh no, nah, I ain't me and not supposed to go to the nail salon and all that. That's, but now I go, now I go get a pedicure and all okay. that. Now it's cool. Would you, ever, would you ever get a manicure with shellac? Oh, uh, what's that? That uh, that clear, the like clear a clear. Gel. Yeah, yeah, I be getting that. Like yeah. I got that on my, I got I know, that on my I toes. I'm yeah, say, yeah, yeah, I know a man that does that. And I'm like, I'm like that man is I so fine. That. I said, good for you, sir. I love that a man that takes care of himself is isn't way. Feminine. I'm gonna say that's way more masculine to me because I'm yes. like, don't nobody want no dirty ass nigga. No one. Nah, it, nah. It, it, exactly. You can't figure me with dirt under, under your fucking fingernails. You don't figure <laughs> me regardless. But that's you know, disgusting. That's, that's what it. That's what you gotta it is. Especially like, can you imagine being with a dirty nigga who don't clean up after himself? Why would you want that? So being clean and taking care of yourself is not feminine. Feminine. It's, it's being just a, being a fucking adult. adult. <laughs> it's just like you be hearing certain things. You be like, nah, I ain't about to get my, I ain't about to go to no beauty. I mean, no uh, nail shop and all that. But like, as you Clean get older, like from. you start to, it's just like you know, other you niggas, just, right? You, yeah, other you start niggas, hearing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Women encourage it. We don't encourage that. We encourage you to do I'm that I'm going to say, every nigga that I talk to is okay. We're going to nail shop, going to spas with me. Because I'm like, one thing about us, we're going to take care of ourselves. Self-care, baby. That's I love that for us. over here in this part. Um, so let's get into some celebrities that um, have a good balance of masculine and feminine energy, a.k.a. when I was looking it up, I couldn't, I, when I wrote it out on Google, it came up as androgyny, which that's what it is. I don't, I hope I'm saying it androgyny, right. Androgyny, what looked up, what came up was like, Women who are trans. No, not for me. I, That's what when came I, up for me. When I said, when I was looking up men that have feminine energy and men energy, they like had like a whole list of them, but they like put it in androgyny. They didn't put like how I said it. So one person that they had was Harry Styles. Is Harry Styles straight? Yes. Okay. He but he wears dresses and you like, you know, granted, like he might be bi, but that ain't none of my fucking business. Right. So. I don't know who that uh, is. Another one for me is Prince. He's a white man. I feel like Prince has a, rest in peace, his beautiful soul, a great balance feminine, of yeah. feminine and masculine energy. Because he know. has a deep ass nigga voice doing nigga shit. But, but he, he had his ass out. But he has ass out wearing purple, purple shit. I wouldn't do that personally. <laughs> but look, each to his own. You know, everybody everybody different. I love it. I, I, love, I love a man who can do that and be comfortable enough in his manner. So you mm. got you go with your man, he got his butt out? No. No. <laughs> she said she, she, she loves that for him. But why would she was, you go out with Annie with her butt out? Even if Ami would have go out with her butt out, I want to go out with her. As a, like bitch, put your pants yes, on. She would. Yes, she would. I think I she would, would too. If you ass go out, out with toes down. Not with, not just having your shorts on. I mean thinking about your whole ass. Oh, I would out. never have tops with my ass out. I'm like, saying if that's you were to go out with just your ass cheek out, I'd be like, bitch, change your clothes. So Go another ahead. person on the list was Jaden Smith. And granny, we all know he's bi, so it's like Is it's, he bi? Um, I thought he, he was. He definitely said that Tyler the Creator was his boyfriend like 
three years I ago. I thought that was a joke. Is that that nigga joke? was crying. I don't know if that was a joke if you crying. I thought that was uh, a joke. Damn, I thought that you was know what's funny to Jenny Smith? Because I said Will Smith. I feel like Will Smith has a great balance of feminine masculine energy. Cause yeah, because I feel like he's very in touch with his feelings and he can vocalize them. And, and he's, he's a, so man's a man's man. man. He's a man's he's man. He's a man's man. And he ain't so, afraid to cry either. He ain't afraid to cry. So he's a perfect... He's like, I don't know about... I don't I'm know. Gonna say, cause I know Jaden, he be wearing dresses and shit. And like, you know... Yeah. Him and his sister, I feel like they're very like fluid. So I feel like the whole fluid is where know, they uh, find Willow the balance. <laughs> yeah. she, she said she was bi. Oh yeah, but I mean, I just feel like he might be gay because even in that show that he was in on Netflix, he was gay. Mm-hmm. I don't fucking know. So yeah, it went down in the truth. Yeah. Okay. Do you have another person? Because I have David one more person. Bowie. Yeah. Um, even though he is a gay man, I feel like he has a good amount of masculine and feminine energy. I love yeah. it. I love even because people think gay men are just like. Yeah. But yeah. there's some masculine gay men. I feel like because you're gay doesn't make you less of a man. And he embraces that perfect perfectly. I'm gonna say, yeah, my last person was um Jared Leto. I think I'm saying his name right. Can you Jay Leno? Him? No, uh, no. Jerry Leto. Jared Jared Leto. Yeah. Like he's very, very much straight. But I mean, like he'll wear like you know. Why a, the fuck is that a picture? I'm sure Rogan <laughs> looking like that. I'm gonna say you, we need to see. We need to see him Leto right there. That, that one, Jared Leto, with the long hair. Yeah, yeah. like that man. Look, you, you're you're very much straight. The Joker? That's, no, that's not, that's not the joke. I don't know who he is. But it's like, no. I mean, because most of these people that were androgynous was mostly white men. So yeah. it was like when we were looking her farther, it was kind of harder to find black men. But it's like. These black men, men and white men, what they come when it comes to masculinity, you're different levels. Exactly, black, and black men are more super masculine than white men. Yeah, white men literally have the the look. You see that they have the luxury of being. Oh. No, I'm just saying the picture. You see the picture? Yeah. Like I'm saying, white men white can have kiss the luxury. Gay, kiss their friends and still and be considered self masculine. I'm gonna say if a a black man does it, it's a completely different story. It's so gay. that's why it's, it's like Lil Wayne and Birdman, for example. You remember when uh, Lil that's Wayne kissed Birdman? Yeah. I don't kiss my daddy on the lips. I don't but there, don't there are grown ass people that kiss their parents on the lips. I don't kiss. I've never. I think it's an American lips. thing, but in foreign cultures, they it's kiss. Not, it's not a weird. It's to not kiss weird to them. That's his daddy. Yeah, because remember when? Um, that's not David, his real daddy. But that's his daddy. Because David Beckham was kissing his child, and they were like, "Ew!" And even when um, Rocky Balboa on that movie, I think it was like in the 19, 1997, he's kissing his son. And he was like probably Ted at the time. And I was like, "Why is he kissing his son in the mouth?" I don't see anything wrong with a man kissing his son in the mouth. So. Nah, I wouldn't kiss my son in the mouth personally. Well, I don't see anything wrong with that. I mean, licking your son, yes, but kissing, kissing yeah, my licking lips. your son is definitely <laughs> different than kissing your son in the mouth. But yeah, let's get into some motherfucking questions because I feel let's like we it. arrived let's to that it. destination. So. My question to you is, how does it feel to finally be on the show? Because we've been trying this for like a while now. I feel good. I was just a little nervous when I first <laughs> got on. I'm like, damn, they about to torture me. Oh, you feel tortured. <laughs> We got in your ass a little bit? Nah, it wasn't as bad as I thought because I, I just came unprepared. I'm like, damn. I think people always think that we're man eaters, but we are. But we are also humans. So we always are very, you know, objective of like, you know, understanding. Because I understood you were nervous. When I knew you was nervous, I was like, I can't go in. I got to let him be himself and feel safe to speak his mind. But yeah. I was like, nigga, that sounds stupid. <laughs> nah, but like, if I know if a nigga going to stand 10 toes down, I'm going to say, nigga, you sound crazy. Let's go. But I'm like, no, I saw that you were nervous. And I was like, you know what? Take Say what you got to say, black man. Hey, man, look, when I watch y'all, I'll be like, God damn, they going, they going in. It's I'm, just clips. Have you heard a whole episode of us, though? Because I feel like we're very objective no, no, y- as well. Y'all are good. Like, but with the clips, you know, I, I w- went back and go watch some of the clips before I came. I was like, God damn. Yeah. That's it. And but it, that's the whole point. The clips <laughs> got to be the most, like, craziest thing. And it's really not like that the whole show. Okay, so even though we answered this earlier, my question is to you. Do you feel like men are naturally masculine? Yeah. No. You don't think so? No. Why not? Niggas are gay. Gay niggas are masculine? I'm not saying they're emasculine, but I'm just saying, like, masculine should not, like I said, we, since we have no gender, you shouldn't always assume just because. So why do you say niggas are gay? Yeah, I, just, I feel like just automatic, like a man just. That was emasculine. my example, because I'm just saying <laughs> men that are gay are not as masculine. They're still men. I feel like mascul- gay niggas can be masculine. But I said, are they naturally? Like, by nature, you're only masculine. That's what my question was asking. I feel like gay niggas can naturally be na- masculine. Yes, 100%. You're still I, a man at the end of the day. I'm not saying it doesn't make you any less of a man, but I'm just saying, is it natural? I don't think I so. I 100% believe it's ma- uh, a gay I personally can don't. naturally be masculine. I think so, too. Yeah, 100%. 
My he just different from you. Yeah, yeah. It's just different, but yeah. you just, there's gay niggas who are like masculine as fuck. Niggas they're you just, at least expect yeah, they're from. Yeah. But they're just gay and they're gay as fuck. Um, my question to you is why do you think men are such terrible people? I don't think we terrible. You don't think so? Nah, y'all, y'all, y'all the women, women. The girlfriend, are you living with the text another bitch? She texts me. But look. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, she went straight to it. <laughs> <laughs> like that, that's terrible. I don't think we terrible people. It's just so like how she gets your number to text you. That was some some past, you know. Well, well look, look, back to back, back to the question. Back to the question. <laughs> I'm gonna say, let's get to the root. You right? Let's get to the root of it, baby. Look. We not all bad people. It's just like some women go through bad experiences with guys and they paint bad pictures on every guy that make them and make every guy seem like they Respectfully, bad. Respectfully, I don't think that I care enough to paint a picture of a, of a man being bad. You do a great job of doing it y'all self. Y'all self. I don't feel like I, I don't ever bad talk any man that I've ever been with. I only talk y'all's truth. And when I talk it out loud, I'm like, damn, this nigga's bad. <laughs> So it was like I never, I've never painted a picture of a man of what he's not. Damn. So what do y'all do wrong? Like it's always no. The I can definitely like, no, 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 no. For sure, women can take accountability. I'm a woman that can take accountability because I know I've done some fucked up shit. But we're talking about y'all right now. We're not talking about us. But look. <laughs> so why are men such terrible people? Are y'all raised to be terrible? Nah, we not raised to be terrible. We so not. We not terrible, terrible people. We not terrible. It's yes, just the ones y'all right. be dealing with. It's not terrible. the ones I'll be dealing with. I do not prescribe to that. That's not that's not the niggas I deal you know, with. So now we on TikTok following other bitches' story. I'm like, damn. And then like <laughs> tell them all the fucked up shit niggas did. And I'm like, damn, niggas ain't shit. Like, I don't know if it's because women are more vocal about how ancient niggas are than men are. Yeah. But like mm, I feel like most men are oh, as well as vocal, as vocal, but I feel like those are like men podcasts that we just don't like listen to. Okay. Cause every man's cause I feel like some guy I met at um uh, crew, he was like, I've been listening to y'all podcasts. Y'all be talking about how niggas ain't shit. He's like, but I've been listening to women, like niggas podcasts and talking about how bitches ain't shit. He says, so who's the problem? I said, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it's always going to be men. It's always going to be the pro- men, men for me. Problem. How we always the problem? Y'all though? are the problem. Y'all don't feel like y'all do anything to no. make us. No, I definitely do. I, I like I said, I feel like I do do sometimes because I, 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 I prescribe <laughs> of realizing that I'm not shit sometimes, and I'm okay with that. The first I step is shit. acceptance. I don't, I don't, I don't do anything to be a problem. You don't. No. Ever. I'm never the problem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that. That that I'm sounds not, like a problem right there. You I'm ain't never not, wrong, are you? Huh? Oh, definitely. I can be wrong. I, I I definitely feel like there's some things like I can I'm okay with understanding when I fuck up and owning up to it and changing my behavior when it's wrong. Yeah. But I'm never the problem. And that's on period. And I stand ten toes down. Okay. So my <laughs> second question is because we talked about this last episode. Why do men have a problem with feminine men, studs, or masculine energy women? And so outside of like the whole like emasculating, like what is y'all's issue with feminine men? Because y'all be the first ones to be like, bro, you know, just like I just said, respectfully, I just said it. I was like, niggas be gay. No, like, so what is, granted, I love gay niggas. My best friend is fucking gay. So don't you can y'all... be a feminine man and not be gay. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I'm, I was, I'm saying my reference of when I said men are not naturally masculine because he's never been masculine to me. Even when he said he wasn't gay, we knew he was gay because of how his mannerisms were. I love you, baby. If you do hear me. <laughs> I personally I don't mind You be you I just don't like that Personally Cause Why What does that do for you It don't do nothing for me I, That's why I said I don't mind it Like that's You are who you are Yeah And but, I am who I am So what is the problem Overall then I don't have no problem You don't have no problem Nah you can be who you are LA what's the problem You tell us Cause if, if he can't tell us The problem What's the problem, problem for, what's the for studs And feminine men Cause men definitely Have an issue with Masculine presenting women and masculine and studs. Niggas be gay. You don't want to be around no gay nigga. Like, you know, it's like, for example, my god brother. But that has nothing to do, like you just said, it has nothing to do with you if them being gay. It don't, but look, my god brother, he's like extra, extra, extra. Flamboyant? When I mean, like, he wear wigs, he wear dresses, and he want to go Why is that a problem? I don't want to be around that. Like, what? I don't, I accept who you are, but I don't want, I won't. But how is that acceptance it. if you don't want to be around it though? It's not acceptance. It's not acceptance. That is. I, re- I respect you, but I'm not about to be just hanging out with you just one on one. That's not acceptance. 
You get, that's so I'm gonna say, I'm hang out with my god brother one on one. He wearing dresses and wigs. That's, but I'm gonna say that's that's his god brother for who that's, he is, that's just hang out with him, him regardless. Whether, regardless, if you accept him, you don't really accept him. You are you're okay from a distance, yeah. but you don't accept. And him. you're conditioning. You're, you're like I'm saying. You you saying it out loud does not make it your truth. Don't project your feelings into facts because those are not facts. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So what's your second question? I don't have a second question. I said both my questions. So thank you for taking this journey with us. We talked about both masculine and feminine energy. Uh, we learned that he is more feminine energy than anything else. How does that make you feel that like you have more feminine energy than anything else? He said he was comfortable with it. That's cool. I ain't got no cool. problem. You don't have yeah. a problem. I'm I comfortable with who I am. Yeah. Right. And I feel like men should have a lot of feminine energy because it to, to be in a relationship with women, you have to have the energy. You, you gotta have just, understand. You, you have to understand. understand. You have to, you know, be able to get in get to her level. Because if you're not able to do that, then you can't have a healthy relationship with a woman. So yeah, um, if you haven't already, check us out all social network at the Real Sippin' Spill. If it's on Twitter, it's Sippin' Spill 1. And tell us where they can find you. On Instagram. I'm that Maddie's Kid. D-A-T-M-A-T-T-I-X-K-I-D-D. Don't go to none of these clubs, though, because they get them. <laughs> They all get them. They getting better. They getting better. You gotta have that spot on. Tell us you get them without telling us you get them. Well, I, well, I promote a chemistry. Every every place, every place got a little ghetto in it. Right, you're right. You're right. Not, not where I work. You're right. Where you work at? Oh, it's called Conway. Oh, I, all right. We ain't gonna get it. What about Azura? Azura want to get them? Azura want to get them. It's African. I'm insane. Them um, niggas. And while you're at it, leave us a five star rating because we're some five star bitches. Ow. Ow.